What's going on guys? So last time we talked a bit about um, New World. This time we're actually gonna talk about trends in New World. So last time it was objective scores, but this time it's a bit about trends because sometimes it's very easy to get caught up in I'm doing very poorly. When in reality what you should be worried about is are you improving over time? It's not just important that you get the best scores all the time, but if you start at 60, 60% and you end at 85s, it's much better than someone who starts at 85s and stays there the whole time because oftentimes that means that you are gonna peak during the time you actually take your test versus someone else who may actually burn out. So overall, it's important to realize that you're gonna have good days and bad days, but try to get holistically better. So I was lucky. I think the trends for me, at least for step one, Matt, mirrored what I was hoping would happen but it didn't happen like this in step two. So I want you to know that it'll depend on you and there's definitely gonna be a lot of noise. Like, look at that. The green is my scores. The um, yellow is my cumulative performance. Notice that my scores were always fluctuating, almost always. But if you look at the yellow line over time, you'll see that the yellow line gradually increased, which is actually very reassuring because I started around 60% and I ended around 75. So that is the general gist I wanna get across. If you remember nothing else from this video, just remember that one test score on your world means nothing. As long as if you're studying for eight weeks, your score on week one gets better uh, in week three, and then it gets better in week five, and then ultimately gets better by week eight, right? So you're focused on the long-term gain, you're not focusing on overall uh, scores. I mean, you're focused on long-term gains, you're not focused on day-to-day -day scores. With that being said, I want you to know that there is something that happens at the end that I'm gonna call the pre -rec effect. And I call this the pre -rec effect because I noticed it in myself, both for step one and step two, way more so for step two. Uh, and that is the fact that near the end of your studying, your scores will almost inevitably drop, especially if by the end of your studying, you finish the QBank. Why does this happen? UWorld is consistently adding more and more questions to their question bank. And usually when you do their, t uh, their, bank, uh, their question banks, almost all the time, you'll see one or two new questions in each block. But by the time you're done with all of your questions, you're only gonna be hitting a large chunk of new questions. And those new questions, believe it or not, tend to be very experimental and very non-indicative of what you're actually seeing, actually see on the real test. So that's just something to remember because almost always, if let's say you're gonna go into your test on a week from today and you finished UWorld today, if you started doing a few more questions, they're gonna always be adding a few questions. So they may add 10 questions by tomorrow. If you do those 10 questions, you will see a huge dip in your scores only because those questions are not verified yet, right? They're, they're experimental questions. Some of them may be great. Some of them may actually be like the ones you'll see on the day of the test, but more often than not, many of them are totally not as indicative of the real thing and your world is just testing out material. So you will actually see your scores drop, uh, especially near the end of your world. Just something to remember because I feel like people don't understand this and by the end of your world, maybe they see their scores dip and they freak out and they delay their test. Don't freak out, don't delay your test. Go for it anyway because I promise you that dip is not indicative of you, it's indicative of the questions. The different aspects I wanna focus on just this time is again a little bit about the mindset. I felt just as anxious in a block where I got an 89 as I did when I got a 51. It really felt just as anxious and every question felt just as hard. So what does that tell me? That tells me that every question is really freaking hard and there's no way you're gonna ever walk out of this test feeling like you aced it. If anything, you may feel that walk out feeling like, eh, that was kind of what I expected. But guess what? That is probably just the same as if you walk out feeling like, oh my God, that was the hardest shit I've ever done in my life. Primarily because that's what this exam is. This exam is not intended to be easy and by no means will you ever walk out knowing that you aced it. You will almost always walk out feeling like, oh my God, that was insane. And if you walk out feeling that way, just remember that in your studying, like you felt that all the time, even when you got great scores and chances are that's exactly what's gonna happen on the real day because you're gonna take seven to eight blocks of these questions. So even if you have one crappy block, you're still gonna have six to seven other great blocks that will compensate for it. So just remember that and please, please, please don't get too fixated on the numbers because I promise you the more you fix it on the numbers, the less learning you'll do because you'll just be like, oh my God, I'm so stupid, I'm getting 60s. When instead, if you're getting 60s, focus a bit on why you're getting those 60s, which I discussed in the previous video that I had. So now that we've actually gone a bit over my trends, I want to now go ahead and go through a time series of my scores, starting chronologically from the earliest time, 
My dedicated, I started mid-January, but I started looking over UWorld in early December. And you'll see that my scores were already quite low. My score was 65, and I think early on I started, maybe it was a bit lower than 60. <clears throat> and you'll see that there's actually quite a bit of noise because that yellow line is my average cumulative score. And that green line is my day-to-day -day scores on different tests. And you'll see that consistently I got 60s down here. Um, as I slowly started getting better, I started having better days and better scores. But even with that, like there's the prereq effect there where you start seeing a dip in scores near the end of your question banks. So again, don't put too much weight on any of that, okay? I promise you it's fine. Um, so with all of this being said, this is my earliest and you'll see that I started out you know, around the 60s, which is totally fair. And you'll see that again, I started getting better. I was scoring about 77. Um, and then if you keep going over time, you'll see that I had ups and downs again. I had a 71 here um, and the average score was a 63. So it's again important not only to look at your score, but the average score on that test. So if you scored like a 65 and the average score was a 55, chances are you're doing better than average. So on the real thing, you'll probably do above like a 220 because 220 is like around average, right? So um, continue to take that all for what it's worth. Here is again, I, I think I peaked here. I genuinely feel like I should have taken the test like maybe mid-February, but instead I took it in March just because I started freaking out quite a bit. Because again, you have ups and downs um, and I, I definitely was doing quite well, still getting the 80s about. Um, and then I also will have, you know, dips near the end. And again, I freaked out a little bit because I was like, oh, wait, I would thought I was getting 80s, but don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Just take your test when you're going to take your test. You will see a dip as you exhaust your um, UWorld question bank. But the most important thing is just that you go over your questions and you feel like you came out of dedicated knowing a little bit more than when you came in because that's the whole point of studying for these boards. If you feel like you know a bit more, that's, that's great. That's exactly what we want. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this second part of this video. Um, if you have more questions about UWorld, let me know. I'm more than happy to make more videos about it because I know it's a very taboo topic and it's very anxiety provoking, but uh, I'm here to help. And um, you know, you guys are all great and just don't, don't be defined by a number. I know it's very easy to fall into that trap and uh, I consistently find myself doing that. But you are better than that and I know you're gonna do great regardless. And uh, thank you for watching and I hope you like, comment, share, and subscribe and I will definitely see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much, peace. Thank you.